Right guys, welcome back to the Actual Yard with Lee Westwood, where we're going to catch up with the former world number one about what he's up to this week, towards the end of the season, but most importantly, next week. So as we all know, the golfing world points towards Augusta National and the Masters. Right, should we just get into it and I'll, uh, I'll yeah. get back to it? Yes, I've got a pro-am to play in. How exciting, you love those. <laughs> well, at least you're not playing with me, you know? No, actually, I'm playing with somebody interesting today. I'm playing with a fellow called Jim Crane, who owns the Houston Astros. All right, cool. Uh, n- nice guy. Are they baseball? Before. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Right. Welcome back, Lee. Um, Thank you. You are in Houston, I understand. I am indeed. And ready to tee off tomorrow in the Houston Open? Yes. Tomorrow you... morning, 8.25. Oh, lovely. Um, and you play there every year, pretty much, don't you? I've played in it a lot. I haven't played the last couple of years because I haven't been in the Masters, so I haven't come over. I actually, I played in it two years ago. Uh, I just kept, I only played one PJ tournament that year, and I think it might have been this one. So yeah, I've supported it um, since about two thousand and seven, eight. So uh, I've enjoyed coming over. It's a different golf course this year, though. I was just about to ask you, does it go back to the same golf course every year? But it, well, it did do. Well, it went back to the same facility the first few years, but mm-hmm. it, there's thirty six holes at. Uh, Redstones, and we switched uh, golf courses um, after about a year, I think. Uh, and then this year, they've moved into town to a place called Memorial Park, which is basically like ten minutes from here, right in the middle of town. It's uh, it's going to be a great venue in years to come when they uh, when they start letting crowds in again. I think there's two and a half thousand coming in uh, this week, which is great. Uh, and they're having pro am. They've had a pro am on Monday, and they're having a pro am today. Um, but when they can allow twenty twenty five thousand in, it'll be a fantastic venue. It's a it's a municipal course, public course, and the owner of the Houston Astros and of Jim Crane and a few other people have put some money in. I think they put somewhere in the region of thirty five million dollars into it. Completely overhauled it. Um, Tom Doak's come in and done some changes. I think Brooks Kupka might have helped a little bit with that as well. Uh, and it's it's a really good golf course. It's long. Um, is very fair. The greens are a lot of good roll-off uh, areas on them. They're firm. It's going to be a tough test this week, I think. Cool. So, obviously, you've had a pretty busy few weeks on the European Tour as well. You've had a good run of things. You played what you played. Um, uh, the Renaissance, Wentworth, Fairmont St. Andrews, and then over in Italy, you played as well. You've been playing yeah, pretty played well. Four, yeah, I played four in a row. Um Obviously played well in Scotland. Started off fast, shot 62 first round. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, played well at Wentworth again. Um, just been having that one round where I've not quite put it well enough. And, uh, you know, I've been there or thereabouts, but, you know, not quite close enough to put any pressure on. Um, Scotland have played okay. Italy um, played okay. Uh, just didn't get off to a good enough start, a fast enough start. So I've been shooting, you know, under par, you know, like not quite, uh, just not quite enough. <laughs> it's going to be good this week for me. I think it's the golf course that suits me. Cool. Is 62 your career best or have you gone lower than that? No, I've shot lower than that. I shot 60 in uh, Thailand. I can't remember what it was now. A few years back and then followed up with a 64 and had a massive lead. I had a, sort of a nine shot lead, I think, after two rounds. Ended up <laughs> winning by six from Charles Schwartzel. Uh, and I've shot a few 61s on the European Tour. Um, quite a lot of 62s a lot of 63 so very good i'm half decent you know yeah different world isn't it for i don't most take of us. i don't take divot i don't take divots for drivers oh <laughs> yeah, the, this is a this new is a team, brand new tee this there, there are no divots on this tee except for that <laughs> one oh well, right world's first Right, I don't think I'm ever going to live that down. I wish I'd not been there that day now. <laughs> um, yeah, so do I. <laughs> That's one of those ones we talked about earlier, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, come on now. Birdie the 17th to win the match. Come on. Um, oh, I've forgotten about that. Yeah. 
Uh, so out of those venues that we mentioned, Renaissance, Wentworth and Fairmont, St. Andrews, do you have a favourite? Oh, I love Wentworth. I think it's a, it's a great golf course now. The changes they've done to it are, are brilliant. Uh, I'd have to say I enjoyed all of them. Um, I enjoyed Renaissance. I've played there quite a lot, just on the outskirts of Edinburgh. Um, I, I enjoyed the Fairmont. I thought it was a, a nice golf course. I mean, you know, for anybody going and doing a like a lads trip or golfing holiday up there, I think it's definitely one to stick in there. It's not by any means the toughest. There's quite a bit of room and, uh, you know, this, it'll give you chances on a few holes. Um, it's a good thing for most but, of us. <laughs> yeah. But uh, um, uh, the, the hotel is spectacular and uh, that was the first time I'd stayed in that. I've always stayed down uh, on the old course, in the old course hotel when the Dunhill's been on. But, um, yeah, really good hotel, nice gym there, good restaurants uh, and right there on the golf course. So, uh, yeah, and I was impressed with the Torrance course. It, it, uh, it looked good. And the other one looks pretty good from what I could see of it as well. So, uh, um, yeah, I was impressed with uh, I was impressed with that uh, that tournament and that facility that week. Cool. So obviously you're fairly well warmed up for this week, and obviously next week would be the main topic of our discussion. Today you got the Masters, bit of a weird one. Uh, November Masters. Mm-hmm. What are you expecting from the golf course? I did see some photos floating around the internet, and everyone was who doesn't know the place as well as some people like yourself. Uh, golf course is brown and looking a bit odd, but then. I think the groundskeepers there probably know exactly what they're doing. So what do you expect from the golf course? Well, a lot of people have been talking about the weather, but I'm in here in Houston this week and, um, you know, the weather's amazing. It's getting to like 80 80 degrees and higher each day. Uh, And they're talking about that for Augusta next week. So I don't think it's going to be that, maybe a little bit chilly in the morning, but, you know, there's not really any rain forecast and, uh, um, you know, they they won't soften the golf course up. Um, I think it'll be in spectacular condition as per usual, and yeah. uh, I, you know, I, I think it might play. Uh, I think it, you know, you can get w- some wet weather coming through and thunderstorms. I think this is. Uh, I don't think they're going to change it to November, but I think this could be, you know, one of them, one of those one-offs where you know it, it could turn out to be a great weather week and a, and a fantastic Masters and and probably a, you know a great finish. Obviously, no crowds there, which is a shame, but. Uh, you know, you know, it's uh, still a major championship and, uh, you know, everybody will be up for it and everybody will have done the, the right prep. Yeah, I guess that's, I mean, they're not, as far as I understand, they're not playing the par three. Um, no. And they've got a couple of other minor differences, but I guess the biggest one is the fact that there aren't going to be any patrons there. Mm-hmm. Um, so you going for your first career major, obviously you've had an amazing career, yet to pop the major cherry, which, you know, everyone knows that. Um, and you're obviously desperate to get one be the icing on the cake what do you think do you think winning the masters with no fans there might not detract you're obviously going to be pumped if you win but do you think it's going to take away from it a little bit if you do get your first major next week i don't think so i think whoever you know wins it we really don't focus on the crowds too much um, (laughs) you know when we're playing in front of them um you can learn a bit from the crowds with the cheers going around the back nine from where yeah. things are happening on, on the golf course, you know, if a charge is happening or anything like that. But, you know, when you're actually playing there in front of them, you don't really, uh, you don't really pay too much attention to it. Fair enough. Um, so what is your first, I've been sent some questions from my colleagues. What's your first ever master's memory before you started playing there? So these questions from other people, you haven't had to yeah. think. These exactly. Are. Yeah, I'm just I'm being really lazy. If I'm going to be honest, with I you. guess my uh, first in, uh, probably watching Jack win um, in was it eighty eighty six? I can't remember eighty six. Was it? Yeah, that was who the won last in eighty? One. Who won? Who won in eighty five? I was Langer? born that. I was born that year, so I wouldn't know. Oh, it's no good asking you. So <laughs> probably, probably watching Jack win. Yeah, yeah, and we holding the pot on seventeen and following the putter down the line. Yeah, cool. So. Um, you've obviously got a really good record at Augusta. You've played well in uh, there in years gone by. Um, is what's the first part of the course, or what's the first tee shot, let's say, or approach shot that maybe gets you sweating a little bit? You just got to start off fast. Yeah, it starts right from the first tee. You know, it's uh, <laughs> you know the first hole's not the toughest drive, but it's, it's a tough green to go in there with. And historically, I think it plays one of the hardest holes. You know, you know, when they top them up at the end of the week, I think it's in, normally in like the top four or five of the hardest holes. 
and uh, you know, so you have to come out of the gate concentrating and uh, and hitting good shots. You know, you try and get it into the fairway. There's a trap on the right and hit it somewhere up the left hand side. Try not to go in the left hand trees. And then you're going in there with sort of well, I'm normally going in there with sort of a six or seven iron, sometimes an eight. And uh, um, you know, there's a, there's three or four, well, three certainly three really tough flags on there that they use. Um, you know, back right, back left that you can't go long on, um, and front left, which is a, a killer. It's you know, you're just trying to hit it in a in a little square area, just long right of that pin. So. You know, you do, you do see a lot of people making bogey up that first hole and then trying to birdie the second, the par five, and get it back. So, have you ever played Augusta with a normal golfer, or who's the worst golfer you've ever played the golf course with? I haven't. I've uh, I've only been there having practice rounds and generally played on my own. Um, I've been up there like a couple of weeks before, and but that was pretty pointless because they tinker around the course and get it so ready for the tournament that. You know, the, even during the week of the event, it, the golf course changes significantly from Monday and Tuesday to and even Wednesday to Thursday. You know, the firmness of it and the way they cut the fringes and things like that and speeding the greens up. Um, so I, I haven't played with uh, any amateurs or anything around there. I've heard some horror stories, obviously. but uh, I was going to say, because uh, I haven't um, witnessed them first, firsthand. All right, fair enough. I was going to say, we, we hear it a lot that um, I think I remember Darren Clark once saying that, you know, a 10 handicapper could tee up on the edge of the putting greens and still not shoot their handicap. Um, is that yeah, a bit, I mean, bit it's of... like, No, no, it's, it's the kind of golf course where I could put you, you know, 35, 40 feet from every pin and you wouldn't be able to get down in two, so... Yeah, you could you could literally hit every green and make if you were in the wrong place make shoot shoot ninety. So I'm shooting 150 roughly. Oh yeah, well if you've been practicing a lot, yeah. <laughs> Ouch. Do you have a favourite hole out Augusta? Um, well, I'll start off by saying there's not really a bad one. Yeah. Um, but you know, I think everybody everybody loves 11, 12, 13. That run around the bottom and in the corner there. Um, you know, it's just a great run of holes. Uh, 15's great. You know, get try and drive it to the top of the hill and then looking down there and, you know, seeing the green there over the lake and the 16th and the distance and there's normally a lot of crowds around there. So, uh, you know, that stretch of holes is... is The 16th a great par three, I think. Yeah, that's <laughs> the place I always tell our clients to head to as from a spectator point yeah, of view. It would be that it's a great place to course. sort of... I w- if I went and watched, I would sit on 16 try and see the 15th and the 16th and you can see a bit, a bit of other holes from there. Cool. So this will be your, this will be your 18th masters or something like that. Um, quite a lot of experience there. Uh, you don't know, do you? No. <laughs> somebody, said, somebody said this will be my 20th the other day. All so right. I really don't know. You've completely I'll, confused me. I'll sack my researchers then. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, okay. when time you, was 97. I know that. Yeah. When you head there, presumably you, stay in a private house fairly close to the golf course. Uh, do you yeah. get up to, do you get up to anything? Obviously it's a really busy week for you in terms of practicing and playing the course. And you've got commitments with people like us and other sponsors, but do you get up to anything else when you're there or is it just full no, focus on yeah, the tournament? The, there's generally, uh, you know, the town sort of taken over by golf fans. So we try and stay away from going out <laughs> yeah. being hassled at night and, you know, we might have a you know, share a chef or something like that, or, um, you know, just, just, you know, something like that, you know, try and not go out. Yeah, fair enough. Um, so it'd be different this year, though, obviously, with no fans there, you know, you'd be able to. Yeah, I suppose. So you can, might go out and explore a few local restaurants this year, then. Yeah, you might see me down at T-Bones one or two nights. Oh, yeah. Yes, please. Having a steak. Um, so we obviously send a lot of people over to the Masters each and every year, and... Lots of them, as you can probably imagine, when the event's finished or before the event, play golf either in the local area or within a few hours' drive. Mm-hmm. If, you were, if you were going to do that, where might you head in the States following the Masters if you are going to go and enjoy some casual golf? Well, I've heard Sage Valley near there is very good. I've mm-hmm. never played it, but you know from, from people's comments about this, it's spectacular. Um, that's if you want somewhere nearby. I've heard next door. Um, is very good. The country the, club, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, the first time I ever went and played the, the Masters, I got in a bit early and I went and stayed at Chateau Elan, which is near Atlanta, and uh, and spent three or four days there practicing. 
which was nice. They held the Green Sarahs and World Open there, and uh, and 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 you know I, I enjoyed that. But I'm probably the wrong person to ask. You know, I generally, <laughs> go in there, play, go for the go for the big dog. Play, yeah, play Augusta. Yeah, play so, the one uh, that no one else can play, and yeah. then get the hell out of there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, but there's so many good golf courses in America. It's yeah, you know, in, in Atlanta, there's you know East Lake. Uh, Atlanta Athletic Club. There's so many good ones there. So, what have you got coming up following the Masters? Are you taking a bit of a break. You've obviously played a lot of golf recently, or have you got more events? I'm playing Houston this week, obviously, and then yeah. uh, the Masters next week, um, and then the RSM in Sea Island the week after. Oh yeah, okay. I'm looking forward to. Harbour Town. Yeah, that that's event. a great course. No, no, it's north of there. It's uh, it's the Sea Island. It's not. A, oh, okay. It's not the. It's not the. I don't know what it's called now, but it used to be the Heritage. Oh, yeah, the Heritage, yeah. So this is the RSM. Played over two golf courses on Sea Island. Um, South so Carolina. I'm to have yeah. a look at that. Yeah, it's about a three-hour drive from Augusta, so yeah. driving down there on uh, on Monday afternoon. Um, and then a couple of weeks off, and then Dubai World Championship. So, And that'll be me, me done for the year, and then start up again in Abu Dhabi, hopefully. Cool, yeah. Well, that's... My last, I think the only overseas trip I've done this year for me, it's been a bit of a funny yeah. one. It was seeing you win in Abu Dhabi. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you had this uh, creepy weirdo with a man bun following you around with a camera all week. But yeah, it but did the trick. did ask, who's that? Who's that <laughs> coming to get rid of him? I was like, there's nothing I would like more than you to get rid of him. <laughs> but unfortunately, you can't. Yeah. Well, um, best of luck this week. Um, Cheers, all right. Extra best of luck next week. We all want to see you uh, bag that major. And um, Well, I'll be doing my best. Yeah, I'm sure you will. And like I said, you've got a great record at Augusta. So we've all got faith in you. Good. Um, yeah, enjoy as well. And I will speak to you soon, I guess. All right, good. All right, cheers, mate. See you cheers, soon. Thanks very much. See ya. Bye. So there we have it, guys. Lee enjoyed all the courses he's played on the European Tour in the last few weeks over the last month or so. He's uh, teeing up again in Houston this week on a brand new golf course to him. And then obviously heading towards the Masters, where he thinks uh, it's going to be pretty much the same for the players as it would be with the patrons there, considering there won't be any this year. And maybe that's the biggest difference is actually going to be from our perspective, the fans, the people watching on TV. It's going to be eerily quiet around Augusta this year. But as Lee said, the players aren't too fussed about it. So very much good luck to Lee again. Hope you bagged that first major, bruh. Um, you guys watching down the camera, who do you think is going to win the Masters? Whack some comments down below. And yeah, let's all hope that Augusta National is up to its usual beautiful standards and the tournament is as exciting as it always is, even though we're not going to be there. The patrons won't be there, but... Augusta National is the star of the show anyway, so looking forward to the Masters, and we'll see you guys very soon on another episode of The Extra Yard with Lee Westwood. Bye -bye.